So for number 30, I'm going to take R3 and I'm going to revolve it about the line BC. So this is the line BC. And then when I take R3 and revolve it, I'm going to get a bunch of disks um, where the lower part of my disk is going to touch this boundary at the line Y is equal to the fourth root of X. And that's the lower boundary of my disk. And then the upper boundary is going to be this line here, uh, which is actually the line y is equal to x, right? That's a straight line with that goes through the origin with a slope of 1. So it's going to touch the boundary here, and then we're going to revolve it like so. Um, so we can see here, you know, if I were at a different point, this would be the lower boundary at this, the fourth root of x, that would go like this. And then the upper boundary would be here, and we would do like this. Um, so what is happening is we're summing up all these disks, we're summing them up across the x-axis, we're summing them up horizontally. So our integral goes from x is equal to 0, which is the beginning of our sum, all the way out to x is equal to 1, which is the end of our sum. Um, now we just have to think about how to calculate these areas, um, because these areas, they... Uh, to calculate the area of the rings, right? Because what happens is it's like we're taking a bigger circle that has the biggest radius that touches this curve uh, y is equal to x. And then from it, we're removing the smaller circle that touches the fourth root of x to form this um, ring, which is what we're going to sum up horizontally. So this is actually, uh, this is a1 minus a2, where a1 is the bigger circle of radius r1, and A2 is the smaller circle of radius R2. So let's figure out what A1 and what A2, what they are, so that we can um, set up our sum, right? So um, A1, we do have to find the bigger radius. So in this case, and I'll just erase this for now, in this case, uh, the radius, it goes, the bigger one, it goes from this line all the way down here. Now, you might be tempted to say, hey, wait, that's the height of the function, but it's not, because actually the height of the function is not measured up from here, right? The height of the function begins to be measured from zero all the way up to the value of the function. So what we want is the orange line. We don't want the green line. So how do we do it? Well, the length of the orange line is just the blue line here, right? It's just this line, which is, has a length of one, because it goes from one to zero. It's just one minus the green line. So if we do 1 minus the green line, we're going to be left with the orange line, which is actually what we want, right? So for this one, we're just going to have pi times the radius, which is 1 minus the value of this curve, which is just the height um, y is equal to x, right? So 1 minus x, that's the radius, so we square it. And what about a2? Well, a2 is the same thing, except that instead of the arrow going uh, all the way down low, it just goes here, because that's where it touches the lower boundary of R3. So once more, um, we don't want the height of the function, because the height of the function is evaluated from 0 all the way up to that point, right? Uh, that's the our f of x. We don't want that. We want the blue line, because it has a distance of 1, the blue line minus the green. So if we subtract the green from the blue, we can see that we're going to be left with just the orange, which is what we want, right? So this is just pi. Uh, 1 minus the fourth root of x. So x to the 1 fourth, and then squared, because it's pi r squared. So let me just, um, let me expand this. So this is pi, and I'm going to foil it out. So that's x squared minus 2x plus 1. And similarly, I'm going to foil the one on the bottom. That's x to the 1 half, and then minus 2x uh, to the 1 fourth, and then plus 1. So what I want now is a1 minus, uh, let me just do that on top, a1 minus a2 is equal to pi, still outside, and then I'm going to take all these values from a1 and then subtract a2 from it. So I have x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then minus, minus x to the 1 half, minus x to the 1 half, minus minus gives us plus, so plus 2x to the 1 fourth, and then minus, uh, minus 1, right? So there I go, I have my expression for a1 minus a2, and the only thing to notice is that uh, this plus 1 and minus 1, they're going to disappear. So now that I have my a1 minus a2, uh, I can now set up my integral, right? Because it gives me the area of that ring, and then I can just sum up the ring from 0 to 1. So I'm going to put the pi outside, and I'm just going to copy this, so that's x squared minus 2x. Um, the 1 I'm not going to put because it cancels out with this minus 1, so then that gives us minus x to the 1 half. Um, 
minus x to the one-half, and then plus 2x to the one-fourth. Yeah, and all of this times dx. Okay, so now I'm ready to integrate. Um, this gives us pi times x cubed uh, over 3 minus x squared divided by 2, so the 2 cancels out, so minus x squared. Um, and then minus x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds, and then plus x to the 5 fourths times 4 over 5 times 2, so that's plus 8. Uh, let's see, 4 over 5, yeah, 8 fifths. And all of this evaluated from 0 to 1. Um, so we only need to evaluate the upper boundary because the lower boundary goes to 0, right, when we evaluate it. So we just plug in 1 whenever we see x. So that's 1 third minus 1 minus 2 thirds plus 8 fifths, um, which is, let me put that in my calculator. Let's see what I get. Uh, one second. So when I do this calculation, uh, 1 third minus 1 minus 2 thirds plus 8 fifths is going to give me 4 pi over 15. And that is 15, sorry, yeah. And that is... Um, the volume that I get when I revolve R3 about the line BC.